1, verse 27 to 30. So in our Bibles, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 to 30. This morning, we're going to talk about our citizenship in heaven and what it entails having a citizenship in heaven. So Ephesians, Philippians, sorry, chapter 1, 27 to 30 says, Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Christ. Then whether I come and see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose, fighting together for the faith, which is the good news. Don't be intimidated in any ways by your enemies. This will be a sign to them that they are going to be destroyed, but that you're going to be saved, even by God himself. For you have been given not only the privilege of trusting in Christ, but also the privilege of suffering for him. We are in the struggle together. We have see, you have seen my struggle in the past, and you know that I am still in the midst of it all, living as citizen. And so um, this, the passage of scripture that we've been talking on for a while, Ephesians chapter 43, uh, verse 1 says, But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, Israel, the one who formed you. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I have ransomed you. I have called you. I have separated you. I have formed you. And this is the God who has given us access into citizenship in heaven. What it is to be a citizen. And so I went to uh, the Canadian uh, website of citizenship. To become a citizen, one must apply um, to be a permanent resident. So there's a process that it takes for one to become a citizen. You must live in Canada between three to five years. Um, you have to pass a citizenship test. And within this test, there is questions about Canada, um, its geography, political system, national symbols, identity and values, and the rights and responsibilities um, of a, being a Canadian. Uh, you must prove your language skill in either English or French, and you cannot have any criminal record. Now, if your parents take the test and, make, and meet the requirements of becoming a citizenship, you, through your parents as a child, then can become a citizen. You don't have to take the test because your parents have passed the test and so through them you become a citizen. What does it mean to be a citizen of heaven? Paul is saying that there are responsibility in becoming a citizen of heaven. He, he said in verse 27, above all you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourself in the manner worthy of the good news, worthy of the requirements, worthy of the, the, the laws of, 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 of citizenship. Um, our, rights as, uh, our rights as citizen comes with responsibility. We have rights, but the rights comes with responsibility. And so Paul is also talking about this responsibility that we have as citizen. In John chapter 17, verse 16, Jesus said that just as he is not of this world, neither are we of this world. Our identity is not based on our earthly character, but on our heavenly nature. So as followers of Christ, we have citizenship in heaven. What is great about our citizenship in Isaiah 43, it says that he ransomed us, he paid, he took the test and Christ passed the test. And because he passed the test, you and I, as children, his children, we gain access through him. Because, see, I wouldn't have passed the test because criminals can pass the test. And the Bible says, if I, um, with my mouth, if I speak against my brother or my sister, I ate and I can murder them with the very things that I speak over their lives. 
And so when, when, when you uh, speak for myself, when I looked at my life, there is no way I would have passed the test for citizenship. I would have failed. And God know that we all would fail. And so through Christ who came and he took the test, he passed the test, he fit the requirements through him, you and I are now citizens of heaven. But as citizens, we have to imitate the one who makes the way for us to be in. Um, Paul says in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, I imitate, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So Paul imitate Christ, and he's saying, as I imitate Christ, imitate me. There's a, a, a responsibility for us to walk out as citizen. Uh, we remember that one day our savior, he will return. We're on a journey. There's a song that says we're pilgrim on a journey on a narrow way. We're pilgrims on a journey. This is a journey. Uh, my citizenship is in heaven. And so the, the, the rights, the provision, the all, all of what heaven have is now my inheritance is rights and his responsibilities that is passed down to you and it is passed down to me. God gives us that rights through his grace. He calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light and we now have been given the right to share the gospel, to live as citizens, to live as representative, to live as ambassadors to the kingdom of God. We are now called to... Um, in Matthew, it says that we're called to be light and we're called to be salt. And these are also expressions, or you would say um, words that used to describe Christ. I am the light of the world and he's now called us to be light. We are imitating him. We are walking in his footstep because we're only citizens through him. We are not left to do this on our own, praise God. He gives us the authority through him, we gain boldness. Through our faith, we can stand. In John 15, 14, he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. In his name means he give us the authority as his representatives and the rights to represent him in this world. In our natural state where we live, we have rights to and citizenship to, whether it's in Canada or in the United States, our citizenships give a certain freedom, but our freedom also comes with responsibility. If we misuse those freedoms and not abide by the, the, the rights and the principles or, or the, the laws that is set, in this land, we can find ourselves be placed in prisons and our rights are not restored until we have completed our sentence. In the kingdom of God, we have freedom. We are not bound by law. We are bound by love. We are citizens, not of this kingdom, by works. And when I say by works, it's not anything within myself that will gain me entrance. If I said earlier, we only gain citizenship because Christ passed the test. None of us would have passed. Not one of us would have passed the test to gain citizenship in heaven. Christ passed the test, and so we become citizens. But what does it mean by not, not by works? I can't work my way into it. I can't do anything to gain it. But James also said, uh, faith without works is dead. So what kind of works is it talking about? In this very text, when he talks about being citizen, of heaven, he says in verse 27 of Philippians, it says, conduct yourself in the manner worthy of the gospel, worthy of the laws, worthy of the word, worthy of the good news that you are called into. And then he gives us how this would be, um, be displayed. He said, whether you come and see me again or only hear about me, I will know that you're standing together in one spirit, one purpose, fighting together for the faith 
which is the good news. And so part of what we are responsible for is how we stand together, which can be very difficult because we don't always agree. We don't always see eye to eye. We don't always like the, the, the situation and what others do to us who we have to stand with. But the Bible says we ought to know that we are standing together with one spirit. One spirit. That's the Holy Spirit within us. And we're standing in one spirit for what? For the faith, for the good news, for the gospel. I'm not standing for myself. And this is where sometimes we, we messed up. And, and the, the big thumb comes this way too, where we all messed up because we forget that we're standing in one spirit for the faith, where we stand, but we stand as far as our emotion and our comfort will keep us when we say we stand together. Because if you don't make me comfortable, if you don't um, agree with me, I don't want to stand with you. We may have our differences. You may be standing beside someone who don't want you to stand beside you. But if we're going to imitate Christ, the good news, if we're going to follow him, when Jesus came over Jerusalem, he wept over the condition um, of the people. He said they weren't willing for him to comfort them. They weren't willing for him to gather them. They weren't willing to come to him. And he wasn't angry. He wept. His heart broke over what he saw happening with his people. Standing together, even though we don't agree, means my heart weeps when I see my brother or my sister not standing in the place that they should be in. I don't rejoice over seeing someone's uh, misfortune. I don't rejoice when something happened to someone else and say, oh, praise God, it's not me. My heart breaks because we're all in this struggle together, Paul says, and that's for the kingdom of God. We're called to represent the king. And whether it's you or me, either one of us fail, it reflects on him. And so we stand together in one spirit. We stand together though we may disagree. And I know in this day and age that we live in today, church, um, disagreement now becomes hate. So if I don't agree with you, I hate you. I, I don't understand where, of, where we've gone off with that. I won't see high to high on everything that maybe politically, maybe relationally, maybe whatever subject it may be, we may not see things the same. But because I represent the kingdom, I don't get to um, disparage you. I don't get to hate you, push you aside, bring division because we don't stand in full agreement. We ought to stand with each other, pray for one another, lift up each other, because that's part of the responsibility of being a citizen of heaven. It's our responsibility to cheer each other on. It's our responsibility to fight for each other. The Bible says that we are to intercede for one another. Um, we were talking yesterday about the weapons of our warfare, the sword of the spirit in Ephesians chapter six, the sword of the spirit is an offensive um, weapon, which means sometimes when uh, my brother or my sister can't take a territory or stand in the gap for themselves, it's for me to lift up the sword of the spirit. It's for me to stand and you to stand in that place for them to say, no, um, devil, you can't have them. They belong to the kingdom. They belong to the king of kings and the Lord of lords. They are, we are a part of the same army. They get wounded when you see, if you ever watch a show where um, there are soldiers on the battlefield, they're from the same country, they're fighting for the same cause. If one go down, two will go and grab him and drag him out of danger to protect him. We 
are citizens of the same kingdom in the same struggle so when we see one of our brother or our sister down um beaten up it's our responsibility as citizens to cover to care for to minister to to encourage but the moment we start to take um selfish pride in well it's i'm better than and and oftentimes that's the attitude that we take um as chosen it seems as if we have um levels of uh podiums in in how sometimes we see ourselves in the kingdom and so i'm i'm on the top podium and so uh, I'm okay, and the one that falls, or I see something going wrong in their lives, they're on the bottom podium, and so I can um, sit in my chosenness on the top podium and look down on them and go, oh, uh, I don't know what's wrong with them, and talk down and look down, but we're in this struggle together. And the same enemy that is after them is the same enemy that is coming after you and is coming after me. Paul even reminded them, he said, listen, I'm still in this struggle. And I'm in this struggle presently, same struggle that you're in. It might look different. Yours might be financial. Mine might, might, might be physical. It might be manifesting it way, it, itself in different ways, but we're all in the same struggle struggle together we're all on this journey we're all running a race we're all looking to glorify the king of kings and the lord of lords we are called for his glory and for his praise we're called to represent him we're called to honor him we're called to be the light and the salt of the earth and because we are called to honor him, we're called with a divine purpose. Each and every one of us, we should want to see each person beside us running and being successful in their race. I want success in my race. I want to see my sister behind me successful. I want to see the other person successful. And so we pray for, we encourage we stand in the gap for one another. Paul is saying one of our responsibility is that we are standing together in one spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that should be leading all of us. And we should remember that we're fighting for the same purpose. We're here for the same purpose. And that is to glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. God is trustworthy. He, he, he brought us on this journey and he never um sugarcoated he never told us that the journey would not be a journey that comes with um striving struggling and fighting in that very um passage of scripture that i just read in philippians it talks about struggle it talks about striving it talks about um fighting it's it's a battle that we're all in but how we fight this battle, oftentimes we talk about pleasing God. Oftentimes we talk about me and Jesus alone, but that's not the way how the Father intended. The Father intended us to be one as he, Jesus said, I pray, Lord, that they will be one as you and I are one. That's the heart of the Father. And in this hour, there are many things that are happening in our society that seem to, instead of drawing us as the body together, it seems to be dividing us more. It's a very troubling um, sign. It's a very troubling thing that we're seeing in the body of Christ. You would think that the things that we're going through, the persecution, or I'm going to use a different word because that word is used so much today in a way that I don't really see it happening. But the struggles that we're all going through, you thought you, you would have thought it would have bind us together more. It would have draw us together more, pull us together more to 
pray for one another, to be alert, be vigilant, not just of our own lives, but of each other. Yet, we see a greater divide. We see a greater division in the body like never before. Paul is saying, we must conduct ourselves as citizens. If we seek the credit of a citizen, we must conduct ourselves as citizen. If we seek the safety as a citizen, we must conduct ourselves according to what govern that kingdom. If we seek the prosperity and the peace of that citizenship, we must conduct ourselves according to the gospel, not according to anything else. It says we're citizenship through the good news, through Jesus Christ. There are things in the faith of the gospel which is worth striving for. There is much opposition, but there's a need for us to press towards, to strive through. And, and, and that word striving um, means I got to press through some things. I got to push through some things. We are called to live worthy of the gospel. Worthy of the gospel means that I am representing Christ and not myself, which is very difficult, brothers and sisters. Um, I can imagine Christ coming, knowing the price that he have to pay for these people. It's, it's, it wasn't an easy price. He was rejected. Um, Isaiah said that they, you, they did not desire him. Rejected of man, a man of sorrow. His heart was filled with sorrow. It wasn't an easy journey. And when he came to Jerusalem, to the people that he came to pour out his, his blood for. The, the Bible says that when he was in Gethsemane, his sweat was as blood. They weren't willing to accept him. They weren't willing to see him. And instead of walking away or looking... Um, at them and going, man, they really don't deserve this. I mean, they don't deserve me. They don't deserve this. Jesus looked at them and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who killed the prophets and stoned those who are sent to her. How often I want to gather you, your children together, the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you weren't willing. You weren't willing for me my love you weren't willing for the sacrifice you weren't willing to accept me matthew 23 37 he looked and there over at them and he cried when judah sat at the table and jesus knew that judas would betray him he washed the feet he ministered to the one that sat at the table because jesus is trying to teach us something as citizens it's not about the person that is sitting there that the enemy is using, and I'll go into that a little bit more, that the enemy is using to oppose you or to oppose the purpose that you came to fulfill. It's not about that purpose, that person. And so Jesus didn't allow his emotion to take over. He didn't allow the pain and the, 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 the feeling that that rejection and that betrayal uh, brings. He didn't allow that to completely take over from the purpose of why he came. And see, a, a, a lot of the, the problem that we run into is we allow the things that happen to us to distract us from the purpose of why we are here and who we're called to represent. And so um, 
when somebody hurts us or somebody does something to us and let's not even go outside of the body but let, let's even stay within our family and within the body of christ somebody hurts us somebody they disparage our our character instead of praying for and loving them we have to fight against we have to strive against the feeling of um anger the feeling of um you know want to see them hurt the feeling of vengeance the feelings of, of of all these things that negative emotions would take over and then distract us now we're focused on what happened to us instead of focusing on the purpose why we are here the bible says that we are called for a purpose we are set apart for a purpose and that purpose is for the gospel is for representing christ that is the purpose we're fighting together in one spirit and one purpose what is our purpose our purpose is to glorify god our purpose is to live a life that praises. Our purpose is to become the light. He is the light. And now he leaves us as his representative as the light of the world. That is our purpose. But there is a battle because the enemy, the accuser, he wants to snuff that light out. And so we oftentimes, and, and it's, it's not easy, and something that we need to remember at all times is that I am not wrestling against flesh and blood. I'm wrestling against principalities and powers in high places. The biggest weapon the enemy is using against us is our differences to divide us. When we cannot agree, I'm just repeating, when we cannot agree with each other, Instead of walking away and say, you know, we agree to disagree. I love you. God bless you. We'll continue to pray for one another. And we trust God that he will settle this and he will work all things together for good. I pray that the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened as I pray that mine would be enlightened and love one another. We allow our disagreement to translate as hate. And so we begin to fight against each other instead of coming together, understanding that we ought to be in one spirit contending for the faith. We're not contending for my opinion. We're not contending for my feelings or your feelings. We are contending for the faith. And it doesn't mean that God doesn't care for our feelings. He will take care of us. He will be the healing balm that needs to heal our lives when we go to him with the hurt and the pain of the journey, but we need to set our focus on him that we are here by his grace, we have gained citizenship and we live as citizens to glorify him. Not of this world, but citizenship in heaven. Right here in Canada, a citizen, there are some of the laws that we don't like. And if we're honest, we'll say we don't like some of the things that are going on, but we obey because that's a part of the responsibility of citizen. And I know there's a lot of you going, yes, amen, hallelujah, don't like a lot of things that's going on, but we obey because God says obey the law of the land. That's what the word says. We obey as long as it doesn't go against God himself. We obey the law. We stand in agreement. We obey what the prime minister says, but... Mm, we don't agree. We pray for him for enlightenment. We pray for him that God would help, but we don't agree with everything that he does. But a part of a responsible citizen, we are called to obey. Our responsibility is to obey. So is our citizenship in heaven. Christ died for the Pharisees who rejected him, washed the feet of Judas who betrayed him, his siblings who did not believe him. And those who outright saw him as their enemy, he still looked on them with the eyes of love, with the eyes of compassion, knowing that his purpose is for them, whether they receive it or not. 
that's that's uh, that's not easy, and that's where the striving and the contending comes in, because we're called to minister to that our light shine on people who outright will reject you, people who outright will betray you, do not believe what you believe in because they don't believe what you believe. They see you as their enemy. People who outright will have nothing to do with you, but regardless of how they see you and how they act, it is my responsibility as a citizen to fulfill my purpose and to glorify the Father. My purpose is to keep on the path. My purpose is to let my light shine no matter how the dark the time is. My purpose and the call and the action and the conduct of citizenship is to stand together. And I will have to stand together with those, according to Matthew chapter five, those who despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you see those are some of the manner the conduct the character of a citizen that jesus talks about in matthew chapter 5 blessed are those who despitefully use you and say all manner of evil against you bless them that's going to take some contending for the faith and some striving to do it's not within our natural man to want to do that but that's what we are called to do as citizen. And in my not responding in the way that that person may deserve in my thinking, I am casting my light. I am still shining the light. I'm staying on the path to my purpose. The moment I began to allow it to infect me and my character and i began to live outside of the characteristic of the kingdom then i'm no longer walking in my purpose people of god we have to fight strive for that we will stand together as one fight for the faith stand in the good news understanding our position Though it may, it may come in diverse ways, our trials may not look the same, our temptations may not look the same, we're in the same struggle. We are struggling together. We are wrestling not against flesh and blood, Ephesians chapter 6, but against principalities and powers. We are to stand strong in the Lord. So it is not my strength because oftentimes when I'm faced with adversity, when I am faced with trials, when I am faced with um, physical issues, when I'm faced with external relational issues, financial issues, um, not to mention the internal struggles of fear and doubt and emotional um, instabilities, I have to stand knowing that I wrestle not against flesh and blood, whether it's uh, the system created by man that is causing the problem, whether it's my brother that is beside me, whether it's my children, my husband, I wrestle not against flesh and blood. See, the enemy will use flesh and blood and I will see flesh and blood, but my wrestle is not with the person that is causing me pain. My wrestle, according to Ephesians chapter 6, is against principalities and powers. And so I need to stay strong in the Lord. Stay strong in the good news. Trust is words. Trust is my trust is power and take everything that he has given to you and me. Cause see I, earlier, I talked about the sword of the spirit, which is an offensive weapon, uh, which means you take territory. You, you can stand in place and declare as the spirit would lead you taking up the sword of the spirit, take up, the the shield of faith 
put on the element of salvation. There are things that God has equipped us with defensive weapon. Blessed freight of righteousness is defensive weapon um, that comes uh, with our citizenship. The belt of truth is defensive weapon that is given to us. Uh, our, the, our feet shod with the gospel is defensive weapon that is already given to us. We come in and when we come into our citizenship, there's a package, a love package that is given to us. This is your love package that is given to you. But this love package that is given to you, there is also a responsibility that I have to take up this responsibility because it goes on. It says, listen, now you got to take up the shield of faith. You and I got to take it up. It's given to us, but I got to pick it up. Now it talks about putting on the helmet of salvation. I got to remind myself, oh, so many times throughout the day, it's not about me. It's about him that calls me. God, it's not my strength. I don't feel like it today. I don't have the energy today. But God, in my weakness, you are strong. And so I got to remember to put on the helmet of salvation. It was a, it was a part of the package, but I got to put it on. And I have to pick up the sword of the spirit. These are some of the weapons that we need to take up. We can have it, but if we lay it down and we don't use it, it's of no use to you and to me. We can say, I've got the blessed plate of righteousness, but when the enemy come, I'm not walking in that righteousness that is given to me because of adversities, because of opposition, I don't pick up all of these things, all this love package, all the authority that was given to me. Be strong in the Lord. Put on the full armor of God so you can stand against the schemes of the devil. And so our wrestling is not against that person that is constantly putting you down. If I see a weakness in you, my brother and my sister, maybe God show me that weakness so that I can be a good citizen and come and help you in your weakness, to come and strengthen you in the place that you are weak, in coming encouraging, in coming to build up instead of dismissing, instead of looking down on, instead of disqualifying. None of us is qualified except for the grace of God. I began by saying that none of us pass the test except through Christ who passed the test and through him we gain citizenship. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood. It's against principalities and powers, rulers in Ephesians um, 6 verse 12. But against rulers, against authorities, against a power in this dark world, against spiritual forces and and evil in the heavenly realm. We can't see it with our natural eyes, but that's who we wrestle against. In Zechariah chapter 3, verse 1 to 2, it says, Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right side to accuse him. The Lord said to Satan, The Lord rebuke you, Satan. The Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. It is not this man a burning snake, um, stick snatched from the fire. Christ snatched us out of darkness and bring us into light. It, it wasn't that Joshua wasn't um, wearing a filthy turban because it goes on to say that he was. He was standing there with a filthy turban on. Um, I like to call that our, our stinking thinking that pushes us off of the path of righteousness and truth and causes us not to live according to the conduct and the life that we're called to live. He was standing there with that. And guess who showed up? And he showed up, it says, Joshua presented himself. Joshua the high priest presented himself. The angel of the Lord was there, but Satan was standing right there at his right side. Which means even as we stand as the body of Christ, be alert that Satan is there. He's always there. He shows up. He shows up to accuse. He shows up to disqualify. Um, in, the, in the old King James, it said Joshua, which in many translations, Joshua, the high priest, which represent Israel. Jesus Christ, our high priest, represented uh, you and I today. 
We are clothed in his righteousness. Our names are on his shoulder. Our birth is according to him. We must be born again. We were born into this kingdom, not of flesh and blood, but because of the spirit man. Our flesh and blood are our human um, man. Our old nature wants to take precedent, but it's the smaller man. It is our new creature. It's our new man. It's our new birth. It is a purpose and the plan that God called us to. That's what needs to be stamped on our hearts. God has given us a name and a place of affection in his heart. No matter the opposition, the suffering, or the striving we go through, we go through it. We must remember that we go through it because we bear his name. In that passage of scripture in Philippians chapter 1, Paul says, I am an ambassador in chains because of Christ. What is he saying? Because of the very fact that I am redeemed and I bear his name, there is a suffering, there is opposition that is going to come against me. The accuser of the brethren is going to find a way to accuse me to my face and even before the Father. But if Zechariah chapter um, 3 should encourage us, is that even God himself is rebuking the enemy on your behalf and my behalf today. I'm so grateful that no matter what he brings before him, before God, the Father is saying, she is mine, he is mine. I have paid the price for his citizenship. He might see something in our lives that he wants to call out to disqualify us, but God is saying, I've paid the price for his citizenship. He pa she passed the test. He passed the test because I took the test for them. Psalm 23, 5 to 6 says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In, in this hour, the enemy wants us to focus more on what our enemy is doing. And in, 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 this, in this day, I can truly say I have no physical enemies. If there's somebody that wants to make me their enemy, I can't stop them. I am not responsible for what anybody thinks of me. As long as I'm living as citizen and it's an accusation. And even in my weakness, because there's none of us that can stand before God. J um, I think it's John that says, uh, if you say that you have no sin, the truth is not in you and you're a liar. I am covered by grace, by the blood. That is why I come, uh, you and I come daily, mo every moment of the day to the throne of grace, asking for grace and mercy, grace and mercy, grace and mercy. And because the Father loves us, we have access through him. Not of anything that you and I can boast. And because there's not of anything that you and I can boast, I cannot look down on anybody else, but pray for the same grace and mercy over them when I see where they are. David says, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. In this hour, uh, body of Christ, if we're not careful, we spend our time watching for signs. We spend our time tracking the enemy and what the enemy is doing. And we do not focus on the table that is prepared before us. We are overwhelmed. We feel defeated. We feel beaten down because we're watching the action of the enemy in this present age, in this environment, in this space. And we forget that our father, the, 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 the one we represent, has sent us on this journey, but has prepared a table before us. So whatever the enemy is doing, God is nourishing, he is strengthening, he is feeding and empowering you and I so that we can stand and resist the fiery dart of the evil one. Oh, focus our eyes, God. We set our gaze on what um, the, the, the principalities or who the principality and the power of darkness is using instead of setting our gaze on the table that is before me. Because if I set my gaze on the table, I will know what to do 
in the given hour. Sometimes I'm pulling weapons that I'm not supposed to pull and I'm using things that I'm not supposed to use. That's why David, the greatest warrior, before he goes to any battle, he looked to the commander. He looked to where his citizenship was. He looked to God and he says, how shall I go up? How should I fight this battle? Because it wasn't so much about what the Philistines were doing. It wasn't so much about the nation around him was doing because he understand that all nation, all people, all kingdom comes under the name that is above every name. And so it wasn't about what they were doing. It's about his father's plan. Strategically, you sent me, I'm on this mission. Which weapon? How do you want me to handle this? Brothers and sisters, focus on the table that is before us. Because if the battle is not mine, then that means the commander, my father, the king, who gave me access into the kingdom, his eyes is on the enemy, his power is able to deal with the enemy. I just need to make sure that I'm partaking of what's on the table that is before me. The table is not beside me, it's not behind me. The table is before me. Looking forward, looking ahead. The table is before me. And even in the midst of the enemy, he says, you anoint my head with oil, my cups overflow. There is no limit to the anointing that you have placed upon my life, the head, the authority. You have given me authority in the anointing. Then he said, surely goodness and your love will follow me all the days of my life. As a citizen of the kingdom of God, I don't have to look for goodness and I don't have to go and search for the love of God. It follows me. <laughs> Glory to God. It follows me all the days of my life. Someone may not be good to me, but God goodness is with me. Someone may not know how to love me properly, but oh, the love of God follows me. It fills me to overflowing all the days of your life, all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house, in the kingdom, in the country, in the place that I have my citizenship taking out, in the place that... Um, I have authority, unlimited, I will dwell forever. None of the opposition, none of the things that come against me can take me out of the peace that God has given, out of the gift, that love basket. Um, you're, you're sending your child on a journey and you send them with food and you send them with provision for the journey. All that the Father has given us for this journey here on this earth as citizenship, he has given to us. But how we conduct ourselves as citizen has a lot to do with the authority, has a lot to do with the safety, has a lot to do with all the things that comes with being a citizen. Conduct yourself in the manner of a citizen worthy of the good news worthy of the good news the good news about christ part as mentioned before and i close with this part of the the, the character the mannerisms of a citizen a huge part of it you can find in matthew chapter 5 jesus sermon on the mount blessed are the poor in heart humility blessed are you who know that you didn't come into citizenship because of anything that you have done but because jesus took the test passed the test just like in the natural your parents have to take a test but because they have the pass the test, I'm a child of my parents. 
you're a young child, I think it's maybe, I'm not sure what age it is that you're required now to take it on your own in Canada, but as a child, you're a parent, you come with your child, you take out citizenship, they automatically get citizenship. Wasn't anything that I've done. Wasn't how far, high I jump, I jump, how many times I speak in tongues. It's all because of what Christ has done. Blessed are the poor in heart. Understand that it's not about my will or how I feel. Jesus demonstrate this in Gethsemane where he says, God, this is hard. And so in, in, in speaking to you today, it's not a fluff. It is hard. It is striving. It is, it is struggling as, as, as Christ struggled. Um, so I'm not giving you a message this morning that says, oh, I just sit around and I just bless those who bless me. And, you know, uh, somebody say, just defame my character. And I mean, lie, lie on me. And, and I just sit around and go, oh, hallelujah, bless them, Lord. It's, it's, it's a fight. It's a struggle because the, 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 the whole man that we're still trapped in, um, Corinthians, I think it's first Corinthians chapter, uh, five, second Corinthians chapter five talks about that. Um, the old man, as long as we're in this body, we're this earthly body, there is, there's just some, some things that the old man want to rise up within us. And you got to struggle against that old man and go, nope, down boy, down. Mm -mm. That's not, I, nope. That's not my citizenship. I don't live there anymore. I have been bought out of that place. I don't serve that place no more. So I can't curse anybody out. I can't go lay nobody down because they have really, really get on my final nerve. It's a struggle to kill that old man and say, nope, nope. You're crucified. Die. New to citizenship. New manner. New rulership. New govern. Brothers and sisters, I'm not telling you it's not a struggle to come together, to stand together in one spirit and in one purpose and fight for the faith. Fight to live this good news. Fight to stand and allow our lights to shine because the darkness come to snuff the light out. And we have to remember that, but our purpose is that our light will shine. And so the enemy will throw all kinds of weapon. But today I want to remind you that the one who calls you, the one who creates you, the one who formed you, he said, do not be afraid. I paid the price for you. I took the test. I ransomed you. I call you by name. You are mine. You're of my kingdom. You're my child. I've paid the price for you. Just walk it out. With Jeremiah, he had to walk it out. Walk out his purpose, regardless of a whole nation. And we'll continue this next week. But a whole nation rejected him and it wasn't so much him as the message that he brought a whole nation it says the priests the king the the people um the church the people outside the church the people inside the church a whole nation had nothing to do with him they threw him in a well they called him false prophet they wanted nothing to do with him because of his purpose and his purpose was to bring a specific message to fulfill the message to represent christ to represent the kingdom they wanted nothing to do with him but god warned jeremiah and we'll go into this a little bit next week. God warned Jeremiah, do not let what the people do affect you. Before you were born, I called you. I have a purpose for you. 
And the purpose is for you to be a prophet. The purpose is for you to represent me. The purpose is for you to be a light. The purpose is for you to bring flavor to the earth, whether it's received or not. And I'll say this again, whether you are received or not does not change your purpose and does not change who your father has called you to be. Let your light shine and let your life represent the kingdom where you hold your citizenship. Let your life glorify the father. Father, I thank you this day. I thank you. You are the true example of a father. And for some of us who don't have a father, you are the father, the love of our lives. You are the one who makes us the apple of your eyes, the pupil of your eyes. I thank you that you knew that we couldn't pay the price. So you paid the price, you ransom us so that we could have citizenship. So we could have your, your protection, your provision, your peace. Safety is in you. All of our lives is in fold in you. You are a strong and mighty God. We can trust, we can rely on you, our Habba Father. Help us each day because the temptation is for us to live and just in this earthly mindset, just in this old man, want to pull us back to see just what is happening on this surface and forget where our citizenship is and where the enemy is, where our battle is, not with flesh and blood, but principalities and power, who does not want to see us fulfill the purpose that you have sent us to fulfill and does not want to see us make finish this journey where we're absent from the body, present with you. Empower, strengthen. Today, as a reminder, oh God, may we pick up the love gift that you have given to us sustaining gift that you have given to us on this journey. May we put on the breastplate of righteousness that you've given it to us. There's nothing we can do to gain righteousness. You have given us the breastplate, cover our hearts. You have given it to us, belt of truth. Help us today to put on the element of salvation and to lift up the shield of faith. As citizen, we stand with those Help us today that we would look to the author and perfecter of our faith as we fight this good fight of faith. That we can successfully each day fulfill the purpose, run our race without hindrance, keeping our eyes on the mark that is set before us, not what is happening around us, but keeping our eyes on the mark that is set before us. We can't do that without you, Holy Spirit. We cannot do that without you, Hava. So this morning, I thank you for reminding us where our citizenship lies, the responsibilities, the rights, the privileges that is given to us through Christ Jesus. We receive it. May we live true to it. We give you praise and we give you thanks in Jesus' name.